Open source video models keep getting upgrades. We have a new way to generate videos fast with FramePack that allows you to create smooth videos as long as 60 seconds. We have the official first to last frame video model from Alibaba 1.2.1. And we have the new LTXV video model 0.9.6 that was released a couple days ago, which I will cover in today's video. We also have a whole lot of other AI models like Instant Character that lets you create consistent characters with just a photo. Although the model is not open source and the minimum VRAM required to run this is 48 gigabyte. But speaking of open source, LTXV video model is totally open source with the OpenRail M license, which allows you to use the model commercially and also modify the model by fine tuning it for your own purpose. And this week, we got a new version of the LTXV video model, version 0.9.6, which I will test for an image to video workflow today. I put the workflow in the GitHub repo so you can download the workflow there. What LTXV video model is known for is its speed. The model can essentially produce 30 frames per second videos at 1216 by 704 resolution in seconds. But it definitely comes with the caveat and that is the quality compared to Wan and Hanyuan. The new LTXV video model release has two versions of the model. One is a dev version and another is distilled. They've released a distilled model that's a 15 times faster than the original without significant quality loss. And the distilled model doesn't require CFG or spatial temporal guidance, so it makes it much easier to set up and use. Just for a brief overview of what CFG and STG means, CFG is a technique used in diffusion models that helps balance between following the text prompt closely and creating diverse outputs. If you set it too low, the output might not match your prompt well, and if you set it too high, you might get unrealistic result. STG is a technique especially for video generation that helps ensure consistency across both space and time. It helps prevent flickering and maintain coherent motion, but adds complexity to the generation process. We can now load up this image to video workflow to test it out. I got the original workflow from here and I modified it slightly to my liking because I prefer reading the workflow from left to right. Also, I'm going to be putting the prompt manually instead of automatically getting the prompt from an LLM like ChatGPT through an API key because I wanted to input the prompt myself before running the flow. When you load up the workflow, if you have missing custom nodes, just go to manager, install all the missing nodes from there. If there is a native node missing, go to Comfy UI and click update to change it to the latest version. We have a section here in the beginning for the image that we would like to animate for the image to video workflow the positive prompt to describe the video and the negative prompt text input. For the workflow for videos, prompting is very important. So I'm going to be using this system prompt that I'm going to use to ask Claude to generate a prompt for an image to video workflow. But you can choose any language model of your choice like ChatGPT. I'll put the system prompt in the description below. We have the model loader here and you want to select the 0.9.6 distilled LTXV video model. You can download the video model from the Hugging Face link in the repo here and place the model under the checkpoint folder in models folder. In the model loader section, we have the set LTXV dist and set v LTXV. This means we're setting the variable to the model and v value so that we can reference it anywhere in Comfy UI with get LTXV node. This helps us reduce unnecessary clutter of line connections across the workflow. For example, we have it referenced over here. We do the same thing for clip loader for the conditionings for positive and negative prompt. We also need to do a slight pre-processing here. This is from the original workflow. I think the model was very likely trained on images with a certain level of detail and compression. By applying similar pre-processing to input images by compressing the image and blurring it out, you ensure they match the properties of images that the model was trained on. And I think too much details in the input image might cause flickering or instability in generated video. If this is for another purpose, please let me know in the comment section below. In the bottom section, we also have the option to resize the image and have the final video dimensions. The higher the value, the higher the computation time will be. On the original repo, the resolution that it was trained on is 1216 by 704. So it's probably a good idea to keep about the same aspect ratio there. But it says other resolutions are still supported. So this is a good value to tweak for testing. If we come over to the right, we have the section for video generation, which is where the sampling is happening. 
we have the resize image section to the variables, which will be used to define the overall resolutions of the output video. We're getting these get width and height variables from this section here. One of the most important values here is the sigma values. The sigma values represent the decreasing noise levels at each step of the diffusion process. The sequence that's in the text box shows a noise schedule for the LTXV video model. So 1.0 is the starting point, which is basically 100% noise and pure noise. And you can see that in each step, the noise value is reduced very gradually. And in the middle steps, the noise reduction accelerates. And in the end, on the last step, there's a significant noise reductions towards zero. So when generating new video, the model starts with random noise and applies its learned denoising capability. It's guided by our prompt and input image. The trained model is essentially asking at each step, if I have this noisy version, what would be the slightly cleaner version look alike based on what I've learned and what the user's asking. The sigma values determine the specific path taken from noise to clear video. And as recommended by the original repo, eight steps are recommended. So there are eight values of sigma values here. If you want 30 steps, which is for the depth model, you would want 30 values of sigma sequence. They're definitely one of the values that you can control to modify the quality of the video. You can also choose to use the LTXV scheduler node. I have tried this in the workflow, but I have yet to find good values that will generate good results. Another value that you can modify is the strength value in LTXV add guide node. When using image to video, a higher strength means the generated video will more closely maintain the composition and details of your input image. Let's actually try running the workflow to see what results we get. I'm going to be using the stock photo of these people driving a car down the street. I'm going to first put the system prompt in Claude and then upload this image to get a good prompt for the video. After that, I'm going to paste the prompt in the text box here. If you don't like the prompt that the LLM generates, just modify it slightly to your liking. And you can see that the video was generated here and it took about 30 seconds to generate it. And I would say I'm impressed at the result compared to how much time I needed to wait here. I can kind of see the fingers here are deformed and there are some overlapping artifacts, but I see the overall improvement in the model. I'm also going to be testing this photo of an astronaut in space. I'm going to do the same thing and ask Claude for a good prompt for the video generation. I'm going to paste the prompt and generate. And after waiting about 30 seconds, I got another great result here. I see that for images that don't have a lot of human fingers and that doesn't have a lot of movements in the video, the results are actually pretty good most of the times. And the most important part is I only needed to wait 30 seconds to generate it and this is completely local. I also tried to create a food video with this spaghetti image and I see that there are a little bit of a weird movements in the food but overall also a very good video that I can use. I'm also going to try a Ghibli cartoon image of this girl riding a pony. I also asked Claude for another prompt and I'm going to paste it in the text box and see the result. And the video starts off okay, but later on there's a lot of deformation going on later on in the video because there's a lot of movements in the image. I also have this image of a building on fire and some firefighters around them. And I would say this is another great video that I can use. The firefighter movement is pretty natural, but I do get a little bit of a distortion and blur in the end of the video. But the fire and the smoke motion is pretty good compared to how fast the model is. And I would say compared to Framepack, I really like the LTXV video model's dynamic movements. Although Framepack is very smooth in motion because it uses the Hunyuan video model as a base model, but that can change as Framepack supports more video models like 1.2.1. But I am super happy with how LTXV video model is improving as it is completely open source and has a lot of potential. It will be amazing how you're able to iterate quickly on creating good videos on this model as the generation time is super quick compared to Hunyuan and 1.2.1. And hopefully open source video models can catch up to Kling and I'm sure we will get there very soon. Thanks for watching and I'll be back with more interesting AI models and news.